it bears the look, sounds and feel of a state funeral. The state of this funeral would have you make that assumption. But it is important to state, if you thought as much, you are wrong, but you will be forgiven without much hassle. And again, if you mistake this for a state banquet, copious amounts of pardon could be served to you. In the western and Nyanza parts of Kenya, death and glamour walk side by side in an interesting juxtaposition of the twins by association. Red carpets, magnificent caskets, meticulously decorated dome tents replete with colorful dressed chairs, powerful public address systems, drone cameras, customized branded t-shirts, glossy funeral programs, portable toilets, fancy multi-course meals, and it will be an injustice not to mention high-class hospitality. <laughs> These are the sights and sounds of flamboyance, Lewis call it Nyadi, and this cocktail of show and concomitant might is a congruous manifestation of what has been christened the death industry. They arrange it in a cycle, in a plate. The moment you see these rolled chapatis in, funeral. in funerals, you know saliva starts rolling on, out of your mouth. The cost of burying the dead in this region, particularly amongst the low community, burying one dead roughly is about four million. And that figure, if you tabulate, tabulate it annually, it turns into billions. Kuna watu wanaaya even tent ya elfu miyatano. Mi nisha lipuwa kuwaya dome tent. Nisha pewa contract ni piana hiyo tent. Unaaya hiyo tent lori na nini na nini na nini. Ukiongalia 700,000. Imeenda. Hii 700,000. Inaeza fanya nini. A number of things. Within the death industry there are a number of players. who include catering service providers, hired or professional mourners, the church, Bouncers who ordinarily double up as poll bearers, videographers and photographers, house service providers, and coffin makers. Those subsectors in the death industry have been thriving on the miseries of the of, 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 of the bereaved. Final send-offs are important and highly guarded and regarded among the Lu and Luya communities and the different activities and rituals that make up the season between the final breath and the laying of the final wreath are sacrosanct. <laughs> Ordinarily, when someone passes away, a series of events follow. First, a close relative with priority given to a woman alerts the neighbors of the death through screams and wails. If the deceased is a married man, his wife does it. If an unmarried person, their mother is meant to alert the people. When a married woman passes on, a husband is the notifier. If she dies in town, the husband is tasked to travel up country to make the wailed announcement, what is loosely referred to in the Luo as Teroyuak. Once the announcement is made, mourners begin to stream in, and the feeding begins. A funeral committee to plan the final journey set up, comprising the deceased family members, relatives, and friends. The committee draws a funeral budget under the family's guidance. A fundraiser is arranged and the bereaved family is tasked with various responsibilities, such as constructing a house for the deceased in case he didn't have any at home, provide a certain number of animals for slaughter, in addition to their contribution towards the budget. Sasa being that oh alikuwa bwana ama mume marafiki zake ama ndugu zake wana wana sahi wacha tumtengenezee nyumba si eti wanamtengenezea wanamtengenezea kwa wanatengenezea kwa sababu marafiki wake ama colleagues wake 
watakuja these expectations are considered compulsory despite being not as comfortable at a time where comfort in huge doses is direly desired the death industry has impoverished so many bereaved people in this region wengine unaweza kupata kwa boma watoto wameachiliwa bwana baba ameaga na iko hata ngombe moja sasa hiyo ngombe itabidi muuze alafu watu wanabaki bila kitu na hii ngombe utapata kwa na mtoto afaa ingia ajoe na hata shule. Hiyo ngombe ikiuzwa inasafanya mtoto ajoe na hata kama ni day school. Sasa kitambo watu walikuwa nafanya wenye wamepata msiba wanakuwa maskini saidi. These are some of the circumstances that are creating a conviction contrary to culture. The conviction that the now termed corona burials are working for the greater good as they are shielding and saving many families, communities, and the region at large. If such protocols burying the dead at low cost can continue even post-COVID, this will help to cushion the impoverishment of the bereaved in this region. Unapata mutu anakufa, only thing family wanatafuta, mukisha pata burial permit, ni coffin na transport. Mukifika nyumbani munazika hakuna kukula hapo hakuna kukaa hapo so ile ngombe yenye waliwangechinja utauza tu peleke na mtoto shule one somebody is dead the next thing one must think of is burial kuchimba kaburi na kuweka maiti ndani ya kaburi na kurudisha mchanga that is burial i don't need food for that hata gharama sahi ya kusanya pesa kuita watu kwa rambe imepungua mambo ya whatsapp group ati mtu anakuambia amekuwaadi kwa group ingine amepata shida sahi hii hakuna sasa ningependa kusauri watu wetu ili tukae kwa katika maisha ambayo tuko nayo sasa tusibadilishe hii maisha and these sentiments are increasingly being echoed and appreciated despite the friction of going against the grain ken ogada's family has already tested the new norm which they say did not leave a bad taste in their mouths, despite being against what they have always known. In July, the Ogadas buried two of their mothers in the span of one week. Both burials were conducted in accordance with the government protocols. Garama ilikuwa kidogo, ni machari bil, sanduku na haasi ya kubeba maiti. Na chakula kidogo tu wa wale marafiki walitoka mbali wenye walipata nafasi ya kuja. This was in clear cut contrast to last year when the family was laying another relative to rest. Tulipoteza mamangu mkubwa na tulitumia pesa mingi sana almost half a million kutarisha mazishi yake. Uh, baadaye hata kuna kitu sisi tuli 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 tulibaki nayo kama wenye wenye walifa wali walifiwa. There are sighs of relief born of the new norm, but there are cries of grief as some beneficiaries of the death industry are in mourning. Wengi wetu tulikuwa tunafanya matanga pia. Hizo ni kazi ambayo tulikuwa tunafanya. Sasa hii matanga mtu akikufa anazikwa baada ya saa 2 days amezikwa. Na kwa matanga watu wengi hawatakikani. So kukula pia haiko. COVID-19 struck and unceremoniously laid some livelihoods into caskets and the containment measures served as pole bearers for those whose lives have been supported by the death industry. In this catering business, for instance, Odwur is among more than 60 individuals who were put out of employment as a result of the pandemic. Inside these stores, canvas tents, plastic chairs, and dining tables worth millions of shillings sit, gathering dust and rusting away in an atmosphere reeking of lifelessness, just like the situations that offered them a platform to provide commercial value. Tents to Konayo Karibu Miyamoja, Ambao Kutengeneza Tent Moja ina gari mia shilingi 100000 tent moja na ziko zaidi ya zinatoshea mia uh, viti ukinunua kiti moja ile ya kuliti mzuri moja ni 700 bob na tuko na viti 
pelofu tatu pia zimelala chini so ukipiga moja moja ni hasara kubwa yenye tunaenda while the businesses hands appear tied the people in whom the culture has been instilled will not let the ropes of their wrists stop them many are insistent on doing things in the pre-pandemic way most so where the deceased was a public figure the friction between Luo culture and COVID-19 containment has played out in the past weeks where various popular musicians from the region have passed away. The mourners who decided to honor and send off their beloved artists in the way they know best were not taking no for an answer. <laughs> On Thursday, June 11th, popular Ohangla musician Bernard Onyango, commonly known as Abeni Jachiga, passed away and was buried at night in Kisumu County. The artist's final send-off was a theater of drama. The Ohangla musician's fans sealed off a grave dug at the home to bury him, saying it was unthinkable to bury him in such a haste. In scenes where culture overruled containment of the pandemic. Let us kunyo, leave us to kunyo. And tomorrow, tutazika kesho. Atuta kubali, mwezetu azikwe hivo, kama hatuja muona, hatuja tuwa rambirambi zetu kama familia na marafiki, hatuja wekewa banyimbo zake tukatika, tuko na uchugu mwiki sana. We are very sad. That is not right. It is not in order. What is the meaning of that? Another sea of mourners from the lakeside was witnessed in Migori County at the burial of another Ohangla musician, Maureen Achieng, popularly known as Lady Maureen. What was meant to be an orderly occasion turned chaotic. Mona's Donningormaya Football Club branded attire took over and ran the show, and in so doing, risked scoring an own goal in the COVID-19 war arena. The unrelenting crowd overpowered the contingent of cops and escorted the cops carrying casket to the grave, with social distancing being a distant concert. They always say that behavior takes 21 days to form, that whenever people discover that the new way of doing things is better, simpler, and less burdensome, they will abandon the old habits. Well, whether that phrase will live on after the pandemic is a story for another day. Okokusa NTV, Kisumu.